overnight on the south today. Grieving families are unhappy with a short jail sentence for a driver whose actions killed their teens. An opera written in Dunedin based on the former asylum at Seacliff is set to premiere later this year. And the flood of the islands was on show in Alexandra as migrant workers from Vanuatu cooked up a storm. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. A young driver behind the wheel in a crash that killed five teenagers has today been jailed for two and a half years. But family members sitting in a packed high court public gallery in Timaru were angered by the final sentence handed down by Justice Rob Osborne. It was August last year that five teenagers were killed in Timaru when an overloaded car being driven by Tyrese Fleming crashed. Today, the 19-year-old sole survivor was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. It was a tough day for family members of those killed as they watched proceedings in court. Nothing's easy, even like leading right up to it. Now it's five, just about five weeks away from when the boys died. It's taken a year to get, to, just about to a year to get to here. Fifteen-year-olds Javani Drummond, Nico Hill, and Andrew Goodger and 16-year-olds Jack Wallace and Joseph McCarthy were all killed when the Nissan Bluebird they were travelling in smashed into a concrete power pole. Stephen Drummond is unsure why he didn't have a chance to take part in a restorative justice program, but fellow grieving father Richard Goodyear was, although left Te Maru after losing his son Andrew last year. I've been harassed. I had to leave Te Maru. And where I'm living now, I absolutely love it because nobody knows what the hell's going on in my life. At the High Court in Timaru, Tyrese Fleming was sentenced after earlier pleading guilty to five charges of dangerous driving, causing death. Outside court, Javani's father said he was disappointed at the sentence. At the end of the day, we're just missing five kids, and, and that's the bit what sucks. Drummond refused Fleming's offer of emotional harm money. It was a kick in the, it was a kick in the nuts, really. I, I can't believe you can get offered full green and keep your job for the next two years to pay it off. He also says Fleming hasn't shown a lot of remorse, a point noticed by all of the families. In Timaru, the South Today. The owner of a central Dunedin tattoo shop is devastated after having to shift his dream premises following a fire hydrant which burst in the CBD this week. George Street Tattoo Co owner Dominic Chapman had to scramble to move equipment and artworks when water began pouring through the ceiling late on Monday afternoon. A four-storey high water spout shot skywards after an accident by contractors working on the George Street redevelopment project. Isaac Construction says it appeared a fire hydrant had been clipped, causing the giant geyser. Chapman says there won't be much disruption to his tattoo business. They've been able to relocate to their former rooms just across the hall in the meantime. Landlord Steve Lawton says he's talked at length to council reps and is satisfied there's no permanent damage to the building. Dunedin opera lovers are in for a treat this coming October with the performance of a new work composed and performed by Dunedin-based artists. The Strangest of Angels is described as a harrowing but hopeful look at Dunedin's former Seacliff Mental Hospital. A new opera is coming to Dunedin in October with a very local connection. Called The Strangest of Angels, the piece is about acclaimed author Janet Frame's time at the Seacliff Lunatic Asylum in the late 1940s. Created by Dunedin composer Kenneth Young, the opera was written during his recent period as a composer in residence at the University of Otago. The work was commissioned by Dunedin soprano singer Anna Lees, and Young says the creation was very much a collaborative effort between the pair. What she wanted to do with the piece was have a, uh, a compositional input into a certain part of the opera, so that worked very well, very pleasing. The script for the opera, known as a libretto in the music world, was written by Georgia Jamison Ems, who was also well known to the composer. I've known her as a student for 20 years, she's no longer a student, she's a very fine uh, singer and uh, opera diva herself. Um, she wrote the libretto and uh, we got together and discussed what sort of narrative would work and then she went away for a few months and provided me with a libretto, I then wrote the music. The opera looks at the Seacliff Asylum as it was experienced by Janet Frame, who famously dodged getting a frontal lobotomy in 1951 by winning a prestigious book award just days before the scheduled operation. 
Young says for one of the opera's major scenes, it was actually singer Annalise who came up with the melody. She uh, provided me with the vocal line for a certain part of the uh, aria in the third scene, um, which I uh, then um, transcribed and set an orchestral palette round it. The Strangest of Angels had its premiere in Christchurch last month with two sold-out shows. The opera is set to be staged in Dunedin in mid-October at the Mayfair Theatre. The shows will be part of the Dunedin Arts Festival and co-presented with NZ Opera and also feature the Dunedin Symphony Orchestra. In Dunedin, the South today. The Dunedin City Council says it's disappointing to see the amount of rubbish discarded in some of the city's most scenic spots. The comments come after Norwest winds drove large amounts of plastic bottle tops and other waste onto the foreshore of Portsmouth Drive. Council contractors responded by clearing rubbish and debris from the shared path and road corridor. Additionally, volunteers from a number of organisations organised a clean-up last Friday, including Our Seas, Our Future, Keep Dunedin Beautiful and Task Force Green. The group collected enough trash to fill more than 20 large rubbish bags from the foreshore. The City Council is urging everyone to take a role in keeping Dunedin beautiful. Seasonal horticultural workers showed off their culinary skills and newfound confidence in the kitchen on Sunday night. The students were concluding a seven-day cooking course by serving up a meal to local dignitaries, including local mayor Tim Cadogan. Plating up in the kitchen for a table of 16 hungry dignitaries. These seasonal workers from the Pacific Islands graduated in their cooking course by serving up a meal on Sunday night at the Ernskloo Hall in Alexandra. Training coordinator Juliet Pye says the guest list, which included Mayor Tim Cadogan, as well as some of the orchard workers' former bosses, was daunting for the students. The idea of serving a table of 16 their bosses, the Mayor of Central Otago, other important people, they were intimidated, I was too. So um, for them to have, have stepped up and do that got past there. They've done amazingly well, I'm so proud of them all. The team also provided musical entertainment for the diners. As part of the course, they'd learned how to cook foods they didn't grow up with, as well as learning how to use flour to make dough. Normally we cook uh, cassava, yam, taro and rice. But, yeah, we've learned a lot, like you can cook flour, you know, uh, the tumblings and everything, you know, scondos. The course, called Vakamia Sina, is funded by the New Zealand Aid Programme and the lessons also helped improve the literacy of those taking part. First few lessons, even to read a recipe, was hard for a lot of them, working out what a cup was, a teaspoon versus a tablespoon, just all those basic things that we might take for granted. The students say the course gave them more confidence for trying out recipes and was a good experience. I tell you everybody likes it, all the boys enjoy it, they have a wonderful time. The workers are set to fly home over the next few days, although many will return to central Otago for the summer harvest season. In Alexandra, the South today. If I can a still to come on the South today, Dunedin fire crews use breathing apparatus and uh, high pressure hoses after an e-bike goes up in flames. And motorists should prepare for delays around Luggett next month as the local bridge gets a fix up.
It's a steal of a deal. Buy any two things from My Mate John's this weekend and he'll give you the third one for free. Or buy just one and get another at half price. Plus, pay it off over 18 months interest free. It's a steal of a deal. Buy two, get one free. Buy one, get one half price. This weekend at John's Furniture get Warehouse. That furniture from Stafford Street and My Mate John. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now. Hi, we're Aitkin Otago. Eight Concern Otago hosts a multitude of social activities, including little walks. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Passion. Drama. Competition. Rivalry. Marketing. Numbers. Atmosphere. Power. Fight. Attack. Intuition. Love. Hate. Money. Cash. Millionaires. Fans. 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 And fans. <laughs> oh boy. My hooky my, welcome back. Fire crews were called to a small blaze in a North Dunedin shed yesterday morning, but soon discovered it wasn't the building itself on fire. Fire and Emergency New Zealand were called to reports of a garage fire about 9am on Tuesday. But when crews from Willowbank and Roslyn stations arrived, they cut a hole in the garage door to discover a battery for an electric bike had caught fire. Crews wearing breathing apparatus used high-pressure hoses to extinguish the fire in Evans Street. A FENS spokesperson believes a fault in the product may have caused it to catch fire. Motorists travelling through central Otago are being advised the bridge spanning the Clutha River at Luggett will be closed during some days in July. The closures will allow repair work to be carried out after damage was identified earlier this year. A damaged pier on Luggett's Red Bridge near Wanaka is due to be fixed next month during a three-week repair and maintenance project. The bridge will be closed on some days over July with the first closure allowing workers to safely put up scaffolding. And while there may be other closures during the repair project, the bridge is set to remain open at night. A 25-minute detour along Camp Hill and Kane Roads will be set up. Waka Kotahi NZ Transport Agency says the damage to the 107-year-old structure was identified during inspections earlier this year, and repairs are critical. It says the likely cause of the damage was heavy vehicles exceeding the 30 km per hour speed limit on the bridge. The works will include concrete repair and additional strengthening. In Luggett, the south today. 
Waitaki District Councillors have voted in favour of exploring options to sell some or all of Forrester Heights. The 6-3 to three vote in support comes despite 70% of the nearly 1,000 submissions backing a reserve status for the land. Friends of Awamaru Harbour say the group is very disappointed in the council's dismissal of a strong public mandate for the two and a half uh, hectares of land to become a reserve. However, Waitaki Mayor Gary Kircher says the council listened to all the points raised and made a decision which it thinks is best. Pupils from Dunedin's John McGlashan College have been compiling a selection of positive messages to help inspire Otago's creative community. The project, called Messages of Aroha, recognises the challenging circumstances faced by artists in the last few years, with so many performances and exhibitions having to be cancelled. A personal way to support the arts. These John McGlashan College pupils have been collecting stories of kindness from the region's creative community to let local artists know why they're important. You're important to me because you've given me inspiration to reach for my goals in the areas of art. People pursuing their passions even in these hard times need to remember how inspiring they are. Messages of Araha is an outreach project created by members of the college's performing arts department. Pupils gathered supportive messages through an online form from schools around Otago. Rylan Urquhart says the aim is to show support for artists during these challenging times of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is a project that's going towards helping out local artists um, in many different forms and I guess helping them through a time which during COVID-19 has been quite hard for them. The messages have been turned into a shareable booklet. Theo Hannigan enjoyed being part of the project and says the messages will also be displayed in central Dunedin. It will be yeah, a launch with drinks and nibbles and speeches and performances uh, and there will be uh, parts of the school community, students and also um, DCC coming along to that. The launch takes place on Thursday at the Fringe headquarters in George Street. The messages will be part of the white box exhibition space in the window of the Fringe HQ for about a month. In Dunedin, the South Today. If I yakane, after the break on the South Today, cricket fans look ahead to the summer season with the schedule underwhelming for Southerners and we'll take a look at what's on the way weather-wise. Come on, mate. The blue doesn't go with the brown. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. It's a steal of a deal. Buy two, get one free. Buy one, get one half price. This weekend at John's Furniture Warehouse. And my mate John. Being a big softie takes training. <sighs> I've gone to great lengths to be super soft while still being strong and reliable. So I'm soft on you and soft on the environment. Cotton Soft, proud sponsor of Bowel Cancer New Zealand. Season, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits.
A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Welcome back. An underwhelming home summer awaits New Zealand cricket fans, especially so for those in the south. The Black Caps and the White Ferns will each play just two 2020 international matches south of Christchurch in both Dunedin and Queenstown. The Southern Games will round off the summer for the Black Caps with the T20s against Sri Lanka scheduled for Easter weekend in April 2023. Meanwhile, the White Ferns will face Bangladesh, a team they thrashed at last summer's World Cup for T20 matches in Dunedin and Queenstown in early December this year. However, the news is bleaker for Test cricket fans, with just four tests scheduled next summer, two each against England and Sri Lanka. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Grieving families are unhappy with a short jail sentence for a driver whose actions killed their teenagers in a horrific car wreck last year near Timaru. A new opera written in Dunedin and based on Janet Frame's time at the former asylum at Seacliff is set to premiere in October as part of the Arts Fest. And the food of the islands was on show in Alexandra as migrant workers from Vanuatu cooked up a storm for guests and dignitaries as a graduation test. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, and we welcome the uh, Deputy Editor, Craig Page. Kia ora, Craig. Good evening. What can we expect uh, in your paper tomorrow? Uh, we've got a, a nice story acknowledging many a Toto local, uh, Peter Becker. He's been inducted into the World uh, Curling Hall of Fame. Oh, wow, well, First New Zealand to receive that honour, so a bit of a big deal, really. It recognises achievements not just as a player, but also yeah. in administration, and um, Peter's been involved, I think, for more than 50 years in the sport. He's been oh, to wow. World Championships as a player. Yeah. Um, selected teams, coach teams, all those sorts of things, so a real, really big deal a for A lifetime him. commitment, that's wonderful. Yeah, so he got rang in the early hours of the morning by the world body to, to advise him of that, so he got a bit of, <laughs> bit of a shock. But, the wake-up um, call you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so really, really excited and, and great recognition, really. Mm. Uh, the hospitality industry, industry is starting to get a bit excited ahead of uh, the rugby test, of course, not this weekend, but the following. Mm. Um, yeah, it's almost a sell-out, the match itself, and accommodation really hard to find around the city. Um, We've talked to, to bars and restaurants and they're relishing the chance to, to have the city inundated with outsiders again. So, yeah, um, let's show is, off to Needham. Yeah, exactly. It could be, the, they say, the busiest weekend in several years. So, um, wow. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. The DCC's got a host of events organised for the Octagon as well to sort of make it a real fun fun atmosphere. So, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be good. As long as the weather holds, it'll be brilliant. Yes, touch wood. <laughs> uh, arts pages. We talked to a couple of young artists in Ben Fitzgerald and Danielle Munro. They've both um, had success at the Dean Art Awards. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, lovely story on that. And just with the sport, we've got the New Zealand Māori playing Ireland tonight, of oh, course. Yes. First match for Ireland in the country. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. We'll have updates on the website and a full wrap in tomorrow's paper. Lovely. Hey, thank you for your time tonight. And we thank look you. forward to reading all those stories in the ODT tomorrow. Thank you. And now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Looking at the situation, a cold front moves overhead tomorrow with showers and strong southwesterlies, some snow on the hills, and a chance of sleet or hail about the south coast. And this cold airflow is likely to hang around through the weekend too. Heading to the top of the South Island first, Nelson's in for a fine day with south westerlies and 15 degrees tomorrow. Greymouth will get heavy rain with a high of 13 and Christchurch has a frosty start, then showers with 14 degrees and snow to 600 metres. 
to our southern towns now. It'll be a showery and chilly day through here with gusty south westerlies. Expect highs of 9 all around for the Catlins, Lumsden, Balclutha and Gore. Travelling westwards to the Central Lakes area, another showery and windy day lies ahead through here as the south westerlies will be particularly strong. A high of 10 degrees for Queenstown and Wanaka. Alexandra will get that wild weather late in the day after a high of 13, while Tiano gets up to 9 degrees. To the northern towns next. Cloudy skies, late showers and south westerlies will batter things around through here. Timaru heads for 15 and 14 for Awamaru. It'll be wet inland later in the day with strong westerlies picking up in Twizel and Omaruma. Both will get a high of 11 degrees. Down to Dunedin. Northerlies and high cloud tonight as it drops down to 5. Tomorrow will be cloudy again with fresh northwesterlies. Then a late southwesterly change with showers might bring hail and sleet. Expect a high of 14 and then down to 4. And Friday's looking fine with a bit of cloud and breezy southwesterlies. It'll get up to 9 and then down to 5 degrees overnight. And now to the deep south. Strong northwesterlies tonight in Invercargill, dropping down to 5 degrees. Tomorrow there'll be some chilly wintry showers with hail and sleet coming through with the strong southwesterlies too, reaching a high of 9 before dropping to 3 overnight. Friday will bring more of those winds with cloudy skies but thankfully a break from the rain. Still cold with a high of 8 and then an overnight low of 6 degrees. And that's the news this Wednesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. And you can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. Nō reira, kia pai te po, ka kite anō. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.